This is One Sentence News, a daily podcast featuring three news stories with a sentence-long summary and one sentence of context apiece. I'm Colin Wright. It's Wednesday, December 1st, 2021. Let's talk about the news. From the Associated Press, Iran strikes hard line as talks over nuclear deal resume. Iran's new president has suggested he considers all matters discussed in previous negotiations to be drafts that are subject to revision. He also indicated he wants the U.S. to lift all sanctions against Iran, along with guarantees that no new U.S. sanctions will be applied in the future if they walk away from their nuclear weapons program. These comments by Iran's president contradict assurances by the EU diplomat leading the talks and could practically restart negotiations from square one, which is not what the other parties involved had hoped for or expected in the wake of six previous rounds of hard negotiation. These talks are being held mere months after the Iranian government announced it was producing small quantities of uranium at 60% purity, which is considered to be relatively close to the 90% purity necessary to make nuclear weapons, which is another complexifying variable for these talks. From the Wall Street Journal, Nissan to spend $17.6 billion on battery-powered vehicles over five years. Japanese automobile company Nissan has announced it plans to spend $17.6 billion over the course of the next five years as part of an effort to add 20 new battery-powered cars to its offerings by 2026, nine of which will be completely electric, while the others will be gas-electric hybrids. This announcement is interesting because it's one more data point, indicating when the consumer automobile industry might finish converting over to all electric vehicles. But it's also interesting because of how Nissan leaders are hedging a bit, opting to announce more hybrids than fully electric vehicles, cars which will be safer options for some people and which may make more sense in some areas as pure electric vehicle infrastructure is deployed around the world. And from Bloomberg, China cash flowed through Congo Bank to former president's cronies. A financial data leak, the biggest in African history, containing three and a half million documents covering nearly a decade of transactions at a major bank, BGFI, contains evidence that tens of millions of dollars in public money was transferred into bank accounts owned by friends and family of the former president of the Democratic Republic of Congo, Joseph Kabila. His sister partially owned the bank, and his brother, ran it. A consortium of 19 journalistic entities are still processing these documents, but what seems to have happened, based on what they've figured out already, is the Chinese owners of some of the country's cobalt and copper mines funneled money earmarked for the country's coffers through this bank. That money went into accounts held by the president's friends and family members whose names were on the documentation for shell companies. And these Chinese companies were then mysteriously able to attain no-bid contracts for much of the country's mineral wealth during Kabila's time in office. If you're finding some value in One Sentence News, consider leaving a quick review wherever you get your podcasts and or sharing the show with a friend. You can find out more about this show or subscribe to the email version at onesentencenews.com. And you can support this and other related projects, like the Let's Know Things and Brain Lenses podcasts, at understandery.com.